Hello everyone, you're welcome to Law, Lifestyle and Basics. My name is Timmy Tokwe Ola Simonu. For the benefit of those who are just watching and joining this vlog for the first time, it is about human rights, civil education, civic education for the citizenry and free legal insights. Yes, today we're going to be talking about something very special. But before that, I'd like to ask you a genuine question and I want your genuine answers. As a citizen who is not yet into politics, if you got into politics and you had access to medical treatment of your loved ones being treated ab abroad, would you take that offer? I'll take it again. If you're a Nigerian citizen who suddenly becomes a politician, you know, probably an appointment, a political appointment or something, and you now work for the government and you have free access to medical treatment abroad, would you take it? I'll explain why later at the close of this video why I'm asking that question. Because every time we talked about these things, without trying to come back for the government, you know, we've always had this stance about um, them flying their you know, loved ones out of the country, yes, and we have very good reasons why we, you know, we're strongly opposed to these things. But today I'm going to be talking about human life generally and we're going to come back to the subject of medical treatment. Now, did you know that Nigeria doesn't endorse euthanasia? I'd explain what euthanasia is. Euthanasia is Okay, maybe I should just spell it or it will just already be in the description, so no need to spell. Euthanasia, also known as mercy killing, is when a medical practitioner infuses death-inducing substance on a patient or into a patient who is at the verge of death but wants to speed up the death you know, process, wants to expedite it because they are undergoing immense pain. Now notice that euthanasia is usually at the request of the patient, you know, who is at the verge of death and seemingly doesn't have any chance at life anymore and wants to expedite their death procedure. Nigeria doesn't endorse euthanasia, doesn't endorse messy killing because in fact, Nigeria takes the subject of human life so seriously such that if you were to commit suicide, if a person were to commit suicide in Nigeria and apprehended under the criminal code of Nigeria, attempted suicide is an offence punishable with one year imprisonment. So you will not be also surprised to know that abortion is also a crime in Nigeria. These are serious matters. Nigeria does not allow medical professionals you know take the life of the patients and even as a human being in nigeria a nigerian citizen you're not authorized to take your life even though you have the freedom of life the right to life now having said that even though nigeria does not endorse euthanasia and our laws codify the importance of human life and our laws are very wary and very, you know, proactive about homicide, unlawful, illegal homicide. That's the taking of life of another, you know. Um, despite these, something very sad is happening in the health sector. Now, I know when we are younger, we had debates like, uh, you know, lawyers and doctors who is better or teachers and doctors or which is the best profession so this has nothing to do with being anti any profession this is just a call you know i'm sure the doctors already you know on that their hippocratic oath you know the duty they owe to human lives now i'll give you a story before i come to this issue of the very subject matter, the major subject matter of our discussion, because I've said a lot of things, you know, you probably didn't know about, you know, crimes of suicide, attempted suicide, euthanasia and all of that. But my focus this morning is about medical negligence, but I run a story by you. I have this person that I know who suffers from dysmenorrhea. Dysmenorrhea is a medical condition obtainable in women 
some women during their periods, their menstrual cycle, they face, you know, immense bouts of pain. And it could be in extreme cases, you know, lead to things like nauseating and, you know, um, um, nauseating, throwing up and all sorts of things. So it's pretty discomforting and very extreme. The pain doesn't cease. For some people, it lasts days. Now this person I'm talking about, you know, has was so bad that she struggled to get out of the house to the hospital where our sibling was a medical doctor. It was a state hospital. She latched on from the tricycle that brought us to court. Oh, sorry, that brought us to the hospital. And in the waiting room, she was not attended to despite the severe and immense pain she was going through. She tried to tell the nurses around that she was a sibling to Dr. X. Now, she wasn't taken seriously, even though the person that helped her from the tricycle had been you know, industrious enough to put her on the wheelchair. And despite all of this pain, she was ignored. And meanwhile, before she got to the hospital, she had been trying her sibling on the phone. Of course, medical doctors and their busy schedules on call couldn't reach our sister, couldn't even reach her phone. And after a long while, the medical doctor, by the stroke of fate and divine intervention, saw a call, a phone, and decided to somewhat, you know, trace a sibling to the waiting room. And all of a sudden, when the nurses realized that this patient indeed was connected to this medical doctor, they started to play to the gallery. They started to act as if they cared. Now, it brings me to the question of negligence and the question of care, the standard of care expected of people in medical practice. And that goes for nurses as well. We all know too well the very sad and, you know, disheartening stories we've heard about nurses and their nonchalance. Now, I'm sure they're very, very wonderful, awesome nurses. I know one myself. She's extremely nice to her fault. Yes, they that love them outside there. So this is not this is not to indict the medical profession or nurses at all. But we've heard far too well of nurses, you know, who sometimes are mean to patients or nonchalant, inadvertent, seemingly, you know, uncaring, as contrary as contrary to what the word nurse actually implies. Now we also know of stories of, you know, sometimes nurses injecting patients in the wrong places. We've also heard of stories of persons who become disabled because they received one injection or drug or the other. I personally, you know, my mom told me of a story where, you know, she she was injected with, with a high substance that, you know, almost knocked her heart out. Yes. So the stories are very true. And in fact, there's also a case a case, a Nigerian case of R and Akerele. R and Akerele. In R and Akerele, the court actually sentenced a medical doctor to life imprisonment. I've talked about manslaughter before, the difference between manslaughter and murder in one of my videos, so you can have that looked up. Dr. Akerele, in this case of R and Akerele, you know, became liable for the death of children, he infused, you know, uh, a substance, he administered drugs to a dangerous drug and in fact it was an overdose to these children. So you see that medical negligence is something not to be taken lightly. Uh, you know, there are many, under the Medical and Dental, uh, Dental Practitioners Act, there are many things that can apply to a doctor who is negligent. He can have his license suspended for six months or even struck off the role of doctors. There's also a council that allows you petition doctors. Now, why all of this, you know, buzz around? Of course, first, like I established, health and life is very important. And secondly, according to law, doctors have a duty. Medical practitioners have a duty of care. They have a duty of care to their patients because we're talking about human life here. So I don't know if you've ever had any experience. We know that a lot of people who shouldn't have died in this country, you know, have died. 
very well we talk about the healthcare sector we talk about you know the role of governance the role of government i i by all means do agree that the government has to step up and back to what i started with you know politicians need not run out of this country for medical you know medical intervention let's sit and discuss these matters you know what if the person cannot make it and survive it uh, survive the flight how about all of that so i do agree that the government should do a lot about you know should intervene medically you know pro provide medical interventions however the citizenry like so like a social contract this is a two-party thing you have the citizens were sometimes professionals working in these sectors the government may do its own part but the government is not responsible for apathy of you know professionals or healthcare workers so it's a balance it has to be a balance so if you're a medical practitioner out there a nurse whatever you know title or role you're playing in the medical field for example lab attendants lab you know laboratory scientists and all of that you know sometimes diagnoses are swapped you know there's a misnomer in diagnosis i know someone who told or you mentioned some days ago that he was giving the wrong diagnosis as to his blood pressure and he was so confident that he wasn't his and they did they redid it and they realized that it was uh, you know a wrong uh, result he had been given all of these things you know sometimes people do surgeries based on reports x-ray reports and all of that we really have to be sensitive in this country so that maybe one day nigeria will be one of those countries that you know people can also do medical tourism so please let's take this matter seriously the human life is very precious let's all converse for it when we're talking about human rights we don't have to wait for the police or you know other persons you know or probably people in uniform to do the oppression we as well you know in our respective professions for example my profession has you know a code of conduct all professionals all hands must be on desk to ensure that human rights in every form is preserved including ex most especially the right to life so uh, if you enjoyed this video and i'm hoping that you did kindly like subscribe and share and if you have any experience about medical negligence i'd like to hear from you Take care. Once again, my name is Timmy Zopper. It was nice doing this with you. Bye.